Nicolas Cage action part 2 starting with Drive Angry. So Amber Heard is in this movie as of recording this on May 16th. I believe her trial with Johnny Depp is still ongoing or it ended because I know around this time there's been a lot of memes, a lot of clips. There's this girl or I guess lawyer or doctor in glasses everyone's talking about. But yeah, she's in this movie. She's fine. She's the young, I don't know. She's there, you know. This movie has a lot of neat ideas but in terms of execution wise, it's not the best. The music is a lot of rock, which I don't mind. There is hell in this movie. Turns out Nick Cage is not really human. Or he is, but he's already dead. And he has to stop this like hell cult from releasing the devil during the full moon, I think. It sounds like a ridiculous, crazy concept that would work. And this movie does work in some moments. But then there's moments like, you know, hands getting cut off, the CG blood. Like there are a couple of shots where a hand gets chopped off, axe being thrown at you right in your face, kind of like 3D. But it looks bad because it's not rendered correctly. It doesn't look good. And so it did take me out of the moment a couple of times is there even a reason i think the reason why he even brought amber heard along is because she's like a stranger he's like hey what are you doing you stole my car all right sure i'll let you in she causes a bunch of trouble gets in a fight almost dies a couple of times cage comes saves her they go to this hellish hell world all like fire color or whatnot cage supposedly dies quote unquote allowing amber Heard to go do her thing seeing that she's gonna be a star or whatever and turns out he's already dead there's this side plot or like scenes of a cop chasing after cage but turns out it's not even a cop it's like a creature from hell or a reaper and so that was cool thought the movie ended with him dead being like okay you are the next one amber heard but no he's actually still not alive but dead dead and then he's driving off on this bridge into hell and then that's when the movie ends so yeah again i thought i would like it because it sounds ridiculous and kind of fun and while it was it just didn't really come together because of bad cgi pretty lame script very generic okay amber heard's okay cage is fine i feel like his uh crazy yelling would have worked here but he's a calm already dead person so it makes sense, I guess. So I already get the feeling that these set of movies might not be as good as part one, but Seeking Justice. So it's got Guy Pierce, who I like. Is he the guy from Iron Man 2 and the new Poltergeist reboot? His whole thing is that he's a part of this group that helps take out dangerous people. And it is true, this group and organization, they help kill cold-hearted criminals or bad people, get rid of them. But then turns out in the end, there's like betrayals upon betrayals because the group was that initially. By the end, Chaos erupts own like friends betray Guy Pierce because they weren't supposed to kill any innocent people which like you're already killing criminals what difference does it make but okay sure and so the whole point of this group was just to help people by the end they don't they just kill people essentially so that felt like a wasted very lame kind of like oh okay now i don't care by the end turns out there's even more members and so it's not even dead yet kind of in a way setting up like a sequel but who really wants to see a part two to this no one so cage the reason why he's even involved with guy pierce is he wants to get his revenge on the person that attacked his wife but then guy pierce approaches him being like hey i know a guy i know this group i can help he does it but he wants a favor which is a big red flag he does it and he asks his kid to go do some dangerous shit knowing that he has a wife and everything and it's like what are you doing man you know that this guy just had this thing happen to him and you're like go out and steal stuff maybe kill a person looking shady as fuck and so by the end he just kind of does nothing well i mean he doesn't do anything he like protects his wife or whatnot but in the end it doesn't matter because he gives this mail or envelope to this one dude who looks back being like i remember i'm a part of the group not saying anything but just being like i got you it's like oh okay key just got into the wrong crowd and now he can't get out essentially but yeah you know just another forgettable average action flick stolen which you know what this is a decent movie i do like this movie it's very simple cage got in trouble with the law like years ago he's in prison there is a really cool stunt at the beginning of this movie where he's like in this parking lots of different floors he writes over this cop car actually looks decent and then after spending all that time he wants to you know get back to his daughter have this relationship all this lost time but his former partner that he shot wants his revenge wants all the diamonds wants all the money and he now has to play ball the cops don't believe him very late on they do you know figure it out but it's like okay we don't trust you i don't trust you oh, guess what i will do this myself it's very predictable yes but i just enjoyed it of this father trying to get his daughter back trying to get away from the fbi that don't believe him because he just got out of prison and only to go back inside prison by stealing more money seems really stupid but he's got 12 hours to get 10 million dollars which this movie does sound like a gta plot and film as well which i do like there's lots of chasing and going back and forth again it's very simple it's not like you know the amazing movie or whatever it's simplistic cage wants his daughter back he wants to get rid of this crazy former partner that wants 10 mil and in the end he gets rid of that one former partner gets his daughter back and the fbi now believes him and he gets a happy you know very happy ending which is good again very safe and predictable the whole making up for time it's compelling it's good 
Kill Chain. This is another decent movie. I actually really like this a lot. And so the Kill Chain, which I only know because of Black Ops 2, a Kill Chain means that you're getting consecutive kills or seven and more up, I think. And so what this movie does with that concept is that movie starts with well, Cage kind of in a bar with a dead body, and then he tells his story. Story starts. The Kill Chain starts with two assassins trying to kill each other. That assassin kills that other assassin. He has a picture of his own daughter. Says his goodbye. Next kill, you got this fake cop and fake buddy of his, and then that assassin that got the diamonds and money, he gets killed for it next that fake cop dies for it and now move on to the next kill this lady whose name is i think just called the woman in red i believe that's her name i don't think she gets a name and if she does i forgot but the woman in red she's obviously with this guy there's people coming in and out turns out she's been with this other girl cheating on her with this dude and he's killed off screen i think they imply that but then the kills continue with other soldiers or bodyguards getting killed next and so now we're following this woman in red holds a gun to the driver in his van drives throughout the city this is where the story takes its time now it's slowing down it's been like one situation very intense kill next perspective intense yelling kill and then so on and so on this all leads back to nicholas cage at the bar she gets her own room and then guess what her ex comes in cage kills some of the boys and then kills this girl well not him but the woman in red and for some reason he like really trusts her which will make sense later on and then now we're all caught up well hold on cage kills another dude giving him like poison which is why you see him dead at the very beginning and now we're coming full circle and so i really like how how they did this movie where you start with a cage you recap essentially what's going on you follow the different perspectives on how the woman in red got here and i just thought it was really cool like you don't see cage for like the majority of the first half at all until the second half begins so we find out that this woman in red is actually a little girl that cage knows about was the daughter of his friend who he just slept with earlier which makes it kind of weird but she left long ago didn't want to be under her father's arms got involved with the wrong people she got kidnapped i think and then got involved with that one lady her ex and and now again coming back full circle here cage obviously cares about his friend the reason why he's even here is because he owes a debt to his friend but then guess what the kills happen again the kill chain they kill two of these guys there's more coming he leaves the woman in red she goes off never to be seen again and then coming back full circle again going back to the first guy picture of his daughter turns out cage set up this whole thing in order to get rid of all the people that were involved of killing these like five kids i think they were being traded off one of these girls turned out to be the woman in red but the others were killed by the first assassin this guy who has a daughter obviously traumatized by this but he was also involved just kind of stood there and watched cage just gotta kill him says that he wants his you know daughter to be safe and he probably will i mean he cares about his friend's daughter so there's no reason to believe that he's cold and heartless and then the movie ends with him walking away from the bar finishing his mission and job of commemorating and owing his friend his debt and yeah that was kill chain like the actual kill chain of just kills going on and on until we get to cage really like that concept the different povs and then coming back full circle to cage himself i thought it was neat and was pretty good and then we are back to forgettable movies outcast um i don't know what this movie is about i mean i kind of do essentially there's a chinese army going after some people this little boy or this kid i think kid maybe not kid but anyways he looks like he's in his early 20s decides to take this uh chinese lady and her son on this adventure to get away from the chinese army or whatever and so how cage is involved is the fact that he trained this boy who's our main character who by the way is very it's okay you know but then cage left a while ago presumed to be dead turns out he's not he comes back in the present and he's like he hates him because of past mistakes or whatever there's probably like a flashback but i forgot and i'm not gonna lie i like slept through this movie and had to like go back and like just fast forward stuff so i'm talking out of my ass right now there's like a throne i think which i think really was the turning point of me going to sleep because there's a game of thrones in there okay sure all right all right and then i don't know what happens to nicholas cage i think he just drifts off being happy for this boy and this other boy that he trains i think this boy gets with this chinese lady and then by the end i presume the throne is there and this boy takes it or cage takes it being the king of the thrones the game of the thrones or something the movie takes place in the past way back in the day but also looks modern either way clearly i don't care about this movie arsenal this movie could have been actually pretty decent but i think because of the lack of well not lack of but the very okay average script cage not being there as much actually would have helped the movie but either way it's about these two brothers where the older brother always had to protect them and shield them from all the nasty things he had to see so walking home from school the old one gets there first and sees a dead body his dead father on the ground it's bloody as hell which i didn't think they would show but they actually showed it and he just tells them run off go to the arcade go 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 and uh, he has to clean up the mess which would affect them and 
the future where he has his own daughter now but then his wife left him he's in an army he got kicked out of the army and so you know he's pretty messed up but also saw a lot of messed up things on the other hand the younger brother is successful he's got a family a wife kids he's at this barbecue takeout stuff you know like he's doing good he's living the life green grass the whole house and everything doesn't seem miserable but also it's shown that he's like this because he had a brother that protect him from seeing his dead dad all the blood and violence and whatnot even though i think he like abused them i think movie starts with them being young and the older one just punches him being like stop being a pussy i think and now in the present the younger one now has to protect him because he's got involved in some weird crazy ass shit dangerous shit nick cage is insane in this movie mustache which is great he's got typical cage craziness and he decides to kidnap the older brother started you know talking too much about his younger brother making a lot of money he asks for a specific three hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is very specific because we find out he's working under another person who i forgot about but cage is not the main boss he's not the big boss wish he would have been because he seems goofy but he's not and then oh yeah john kosak is in this movie turns out he like know these brothers and they had like a falling out or whatever he helps the younger one you know get to his brother but then also i don't think the movie explains how the younger one knew how to use a gun unless i forgot because he didn't join the army right or maybe he did or maybe this is just plot armor okay you know it doesn't matter either way they get the older brother out and in the end they have a very heartfelt like baseball like throw just like they did when they were younger still being brothers again the whole brother stuff that works really well everything else is like maybe get more cage in it and maybe you know the script should be better vengeance love story i like this movie which is good it's a good thing and it's about just the whole court system and how flawed it is how broken it can be and how it's just doesn't work for some people or some judges that just get paid off and so cage he's trying to get redemption for this family this mother who got beaten almost to death by a group of guys and criminals i think and decides you know what i'll deal with this and he starts killing people he kills a guy like at night and people are freaking out don't worry i'm a cop and, you know abuse of power sure maybe for good okay sure i'm done with this my favorite kill of the movie by the way is in this waterfall he shoots a guy he goes flying from this bullet shot out into the water like it seems like it was comical he was obviously on a wire but still it seems so comical that it's like okay everybody knows what it's doing i think because that guy just went flying I was like what the fuck is going on yo and i actually do appreciate that they show scenes of the mother and the aftermath of this whole situation i think the daughter had to witness it but you just see like her trying to cope with everything almost like committing suicide because she feels powerless she would think that the court system would help lawyers or whatever but no it did not help at all whatsoever and so she feels hopeless and worthless but she doesn't which thank god the movie would have been real dark if they actually took that turn but they realize hey you know what this guy that looks like nicholas cage he's doing the job he's getting people killing them getting out the streets in the end he still has to work which you know what i don't know how he still has a job because he killed people as a cop essentially and no one's doing anything about it so i don't know how he's doing it in a way he does redeem this lady and her daughter a score to settle so just like with arsenal what makes this movie work is the father and son relationship between cage and his son he spends years in prisons just like with oh, what was the movie called stolen which is honest list i forgot but just like with that movie he wants to make up for the lost time that he had without his son and so the scenes with him like that car scene of him driving in this very nice expensive looking car both being very much happy they seem really happy at first it's not you know great because it's like hey welcome back dad hey you know slowly but surely they build up they have a bond you know and they seem very much happy but then there's a side to cage that's like you know what i want my goddamn revenge for the people that sold me out like a goddamn rat it's either revenge or family and he chooses you know revenge which is you know a lot more fun to watch than family let's be honest and so i was kind of expecting now this is all me kind of my expectations of getting revenge is gonna get blood and gore it didn't which is fine you know and like most of the action scenes are okay again too many like cuts here and there they're fine entertaining enough they're not like awful or anything but then the twist because which i don't know why there has to be a twist but turns out the son was responsible for cage going to prison because he was a heroin addict he was gonna you know rat them all out the boss and his friends are like okay we need to do something and so they had to sell out nicholas cage and so it is kind of a heartbreak that his own son was responsible for this i don't think he knew what the boys did his son already died before this part and so i do like how the movie ends where cage is gonna go out guns blazing right and he gets shot a lot of times but what's nice is that ghost of his son shows up on the steps talking to him being like get a go 
spend more time together in the next life. I do like that. Without his son, he's just like, you know what? Screw this. I'm out. The whole betrayal part, sure, I guess. I guess it needs to be something close to Cage, something personal. And so I get that part. It works. It was all gun blazing. He gets to be with his son. So that's all that matters. Primal. This is essentially animals on a boat, just like snakes on a plane. And no way, that's it. I was trying to think of other like animal horror related movies. Does Cujo count? I'm gonna count Cujo. Anyways, Cage is like a zookeeper and he wants to take these exotic animals out from Mexico, I think, to the US and to the zoo because, you know, people want to see it, I guess. The CGI, it's decent. It's not like amazing. That white jaguar at the beginning, you can tell it's CG, but it doesn't look awful, right? It doesn't look like, god damn. They had to put no effort into this. They did. The budget for this movie was probably not a lot. I didn't mind it. It was fine. And then even the little monkeys on the boat, whenever they get out, obviously it doesn't look the best, but it looks decent. It looks fine. And then they kill that one dude. And then the rest of the animals, they all get out. The wet white jaguar, a bunch of animals. This one guy, the villain, who I don't even remember because he's so forgettable. What matters is animals on a goddamn boat. That's all that matters. And then I didn't realize the actress playing, I guess, the officer lady is Jean Grey. She's Jean Grey from the older X-Men movies. So that was cool to see her again. I haven't seen her in a long ass time. What was her last movie aside from X3? X-Men Last Stand. I don't remember. Anyways, movie's fine. It's just, you know, entertaining from just animals on this boat being free, killing people. CGI is decent. It's fine. And finally, Grand Isle. I don't really like this movie, but it's not a bad movie, but I still don't like it. I don't know why. It's just insufferable in the first half, or I guess most of it, until the twist. This couple, Cage and his wife, they pretend to be, you know, in a very toxic relationship. They're always arguing and whatnot. They are just not happy whatsoever. And then you get this guy who, like, broke his fence, has to go fix it. He has a wife. He has an affair with this lady. After all this, having to choose her or his wife or Nick Cage or whatever, turns out, Cage and his wife are both in on this, bringing people in so that they can just kill them essentially. So it's just a big old scam. Why would this guy even help? I mean, granted, he needs money, but still, like, okay, another job? Hell no. Using his gun, shooting bottles at the gate. It's like, what the hell is going on, you? I'm out. Hell no. There also seems to be a lot of focus on this basement. Either it's dead bodies or the kids are in there, I think. One of the two or both. Eventually, this guy gets to the cops. The cops get there. They find nothing conveniently. Our main character gets back to his wife. Wife just leaves him because he's supposed to get money for his family but he got in trouble with the law and everything but then cage comes back because his wife got arrested they've all find out what the hell's going on in the basements and he decides to kidnap the main character's wife had this you know standoff they obviously get rid of cage in the end our main guy and his wife get back together being like we should probably work things out and let's go and then in the end it says you don't really know what your neighbors are really like so i guess it's a play on that neighbors that you think are nice but turns out they're actually creepy and monsters essentially which i think there would have been a better way of doing it not a complete stranger maybe have an actual neighbor be the main character not this guy or whatever but either way overall is okay but I, I don't know i just don't like it it's insufferable like throughout the whole movie it's okay i don't like it and that was it for action part two with nicholas cage okay yeah this part was yeah just not good there's a handful of here that's like god damn i don't know what to talk about i got nothing out of it whatever you know like god damn the first part was so much fun mainly because of face off so i think this will be the last video before before the ranking comes the only two movies that i didn't cover are massive talent or the unbearable massive waste of talent that movie and then the retirement plan which was supposed to come out last year in 2021 but now i've looked it up it's not 2022 but there's no date for it so all of this was supposed to lead up to august something for its 40th anniversary debut uh, with 100 movies and i don't want it to be 99 but hopefully that movie comes out before august that is it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching